Moldavia, Romanian, Moldova, pronounced Moldova, listen or Tara Moldova in Romanian Latin alphabet, Cara Moldova in Old Romanian Cyrillic alphabet is a historical region and former principality in Central and Eastern Europe, corresponding to the territory between the Eastern Carpathians and the Dniester River. An initially independent and later autonomous state, it existed from the 14th century to 1859, when it united with Wallachia Tara Romanesca as the basis of the modern Romanian state. At various times, Moldavia included the regions of Bessarabia with the Bujac, all of Bukovina and Herza. The region of Pocutia was also part of it for a period of time. The western half of Moldavia is now part of Romania, the eastern side belongs to the Republic of Moldova, and the northern and southeastern parts are territories of Ukraine. <laughs> Name and etymology The original and short-lived reference to the region was Bogdania, after Bogdan I, the founding figure of the Principality. The names Moldavia and Moldova are derived from the name of the Moldova River, however, the etymology is not known and there are several variants. A legend mentioned in Descriptio Moldaviae by Dimitri Cantomir links it to an aurochs hunting trip of the Maramures voivode Dragos and the latter's chase of a star-marked bull. Dragos was accompanied by his female hound called Mulder. When they reached the shores of an unfamiliar river, Mulder caught up with the animal and was killed by it. The dog's name would have been given to the river and extended to the country. The Old German Mulder, meaning, open pit mine. The Gothic Mulder, Gothic, runic, meaning, dust, dirt, cognate with the English mold, referring to the river. A Slavic etymology, over is a quite common Slavic suffix, marking the end of one Slavic genitive form, denoting ownership, chiefly of feminine nouns, i.e., that of Mulder. A landowner named Alexa Moldaevich is mentioned in a 1334 document as a local boyar in service to Yuri II of Halic. This attests to the use of the name before the foundation of the Moldavian state and could be the source for the region's name. In several early references, Moldavia is rendered under the composite form Moldo Wallachia, in the same way Wallachia may appear as Hungro Wallachia. Ottoman Turkish references to Moldavia included Bogdan i Flak meaning Bogdan's Wallachia and Bogdan and occasionally Kara Bogdan Black Bogdania See also names in other languages The name of the region in other languages include French Moldavi German Moldai Hungarian Moldva Russian Moldavia Moldavia Turkish Bogdan Prensligi Greek Moldavia Topic History Topic <laughs> Prehistory and Antiquity Topic <laughs> <laughs> Early Middle Ages The inhabitants of Moldova were Christians. Archaeological works revealed the remains of a Christian necropolis at Mahalaseni, Botosani County, from the 5th century. The place of worship, and the tombs had Christian characteristics. The place of worship had a rectangular form with sides of 8 and 7 meters. Similar necropolises and places of worship were found at Nicolina, in Yasith Bolohovani, a Vlach population, is mentioned by the Hypatian Chronicle in the 13th century. The chronicle shows that this land is bordered on the principalities of Halic, Volhynia and Kiev. Archaeological research also identified the location of 13th century fortified settlements in this region. Alexandru V. Boulder identified Voskodavi, Voskodavti, Voloskovti, Volkovti, Volosovka and their other towns and villages between the middle course of the rivers Dnestru, Dniester and Nipru, Dnieper. The Bolohovani disappeared from chronicles after their defeat in 1257 by Daniel of Galicia's troops. 
In the early 13th century, the Brodniks, a possible Slavic Vlach vassal state of Halic, were present, alongside the Vlachs, in much of the region's territory. Towards 1216, the Brodniks are mentioned as in service of Suzdal. On the border between Halic and the Brodniks, in the 11th century, a Viking by the name of Rodfos was killed in the area by Vlachs who supposedly betrayed him. In 1164, the future Byzantine emperor Andronikos I Komnenos, was taken prisoner by Vlach shepherds around the same region. <laughs> High Middle Ages Friar William of Rubruck, who visited the court of the Great Khan in the 1250s, listed the Black or Vlachs, among the peoples who paid tribute to the Mongols, but the Vlachs territory is uncertain. Rubruck described Blakia as a sans territory south of the Lower Danube, showing that he identified it with the northern regions of the Second Bulgarian Empire. Later in the 14th century, King Charles I of Hungary attempted to expand his realm and the influence of the Catholic Church eastwards after the fall of Cuman rule, and ordered a campaign under the command of Finta de Mende 1324. In 1342 and 1345, the Hungarians were victorious in a battle against Tata Mongols. The conflict was resolved by the death of Jani Beg, in 1357. The Polish chronicler Jan de Lugos mentioned Moldavians under the name Wallachians as having joined a military expedition in 1342, under King Vladislav I, against the Margraviate of Brandenburg. In 1353, Dragos, mentioned as a Vlach Nyaz in Maramures, was sent by Louis I to establish a line of defence against the Golden Horde forces of Mongols on the Sirat River. This expedition resulted in a polity vassal to Hungary, centered around Bayer Targal Moldove or Moldvabanya. Bogdan of Kuhaya, another Vlach voivode from Maramures who had fallen out with the Hungarian king, crossed the Carpathians in 1359, took control of Moldavia, and succeeded in removing Moldavia from Hungarian control. His realm extended north to the Cheremos River, while the southern part of Moldavia was still occupied by the Tatar Mongols. After first residing in Bayer, Bogdan moved Moldavia's seat to Sirat it was to remain there until Petru Musat moved it to Suchava, it was finally moved to Yassi under Alexandru Lapisninu, in 1565. The area around Suchava, roughly correspondent to future Bukovina, would later constitute one of the two administrative divisions of the new realm, under the name Tara de Sus the upper land whereas the rest, on both sides of the Prut River, formed Tara de Jos the lower land. Disfavoured by the brief union of Angevin Poland and Hungary the latter was still the country's overlord, Bogdan's successor Lachu accepted conversion to Roman Catholicism around 1370, but his gesture was to remain without consequences. Despite remaining officially Eastern Orthodox and culturally connected with the Byzantine Empire after 1382, princes of the House of Bogdan Musat entered a conflict with the Constantinople Patriarchy over control of appointments to the newly founded Moldavian Metropolitan seat. Patriarch Antony IV even cast an anathema over Moldavia after Roman I expelled his appointee back to Byzantium. The crisis was finally settled in favor of the Moldavian princes under Alexander I. Nevertheless, religious policy remained complex, while conversions to faiths other than Orthodox were discouraged and forbidden for princes. Moldavia included sizable Roman Catholic communities, Germans and Magyars, as well as non Chalcedonic Armenians. After 1460, the country welcomed Hussite refugees, founders of Siobertu and, probably, Husi. The Principality of Moldavia covered the entire geographic region of Moldavia. In various periods, various other territories were politically connected with the Moldavian Principality. This is the case of the province of Pokutia, the fiefdoms of Setatea de Balta and Siseu, both in Transylvania or, at a later date, the territories between the Dniesta and the Bug rivers. Petru I profited from the end of the Hungarian-Polish Union and moved the country closer to the Jagiellon realm, becoming a vassal of Vladislav II on September 26, 1387. 
This gesture was to have unexpected consequences. Petru supplied the Polish ruler with funds needed in the war against the Teutonic Knights, and was granted control over Pokutia until the debt was to be repaid. As this is not recorded to have been carried out, the region became disputed by the two states, until it was lost by Moldavia in the Battle of Oberton. Prince Petru also expanded his rule southwards to the Danube Delta. His brother Roman I conquered the Hungarian ruled Setatea Alba in 1392, giving Moldavia an outlet to the Black Sea, before being toppled from the throne for supporting Fyodor Karajatovich in his conflict with Vytautas the Great of Lithuania. Under Stephen I, growing Polish influence was challenged by Sigismund of Hungary, whose expedition was defeated at Gindroani in 1385, however, Stephen disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Although Alexander I was brought to the throne in 1400 by the Hungarians with assistance from Mercia I of Wallachia, he shifted his allegiances towards Poland notably engaging Moldavian forces on the Polish side in the Battle of Grunwald and the Siege of Marienburg, and placed his own choice of rulers in Wallachia. His reign was one of the most successful in Moldavia's history, but also saw the very first confrontation with the Ottoman Turks at Setatea Alba in 1420, and later even a conflict with the Poles. A deep crisis was to follow Alexandru's long reign, with his successors battling each other in a succession of wars that divided the country until the murder of Bogdan II and the ascension of Peter III Aran in 1451. Nevertheless, Moldavia was subject to further Hungarian interventions after that moment, as Matthias Corvinus deposed Aran and backed Alexandral to the throne in Suchava. Petru Aran's rule also signified the beginning of Moldavia's Ottoman Empire allegiance, as the ruler agreed to pay tribute to Sultan Mehmed II. <laughs> Late Middle Ages Under Stephen the Great, who took the throne and subsequently came to an agreement with Kazimierz IV of Poland in 1457, the state reached its most glorious period. Stephen blocked Hungarian interventions in the Battle of Bayer, invaded Wallachia in 1471, and dealt with Ottoman reprisals in a major victory the 1475 Battle of Vaslui. .After feeling threatened by Polish ambitions, he also attacked Galicia and resisted Polish reprisals in the Battle of the Cosman Forest 1497. However, he had to surrender Chilia Kilia, and Setatea Alba Bilhorod Nistrovsky, the two main fortresses in the Budjak, to the Ottomans in 1484, and in 1498 he had to accept Ottoman suzerainty, when he was forced to agree to continue paying tribute to Sultan Bayezid II. Following the taking of Houghton, Cotton, and Pokutia, Stephen's rule also brought a brief extension of Moldavian rule into Transylvania. Setatea de Balta and Siseu became his fiefs in 1489. <laughs> Early modern era and Renaissance Under Bogdan III the one-eyed, Ottoman overlordship was confirmed in the shape that would rapidly evolve into control over Moldavia's affairs. Peter IV Rez, who reigned in the 1530s and 1540s, clashed with the Habsburg monarchy over his ambitions in Transylvania losing possessions in the region to George Martinuzzi, was defeated in Pokutia by Poland, and failed in his attempt to extricate Moldavia from Ottoman rule. The country lost Benda to the Ottomans, who included it in the Silistra ALA. A period of profound crisis followed. Moldavia stopped issuing its own coinage circa 1520, under Prince Stefanita, when it was confronted with rapid depletion of funds and rising demands from the port. Such problems became endemic when the country, brought into the Great Turkish War, suffered the impact of the stagnation of the Ottoman Empire. At one point, during the 1650s and 1660s, princes began relying on counterfeit coinage, usually copies of Swedish riksdalers, as was that issued by Eustrati Dabija. The economic decline was accompanied by a failure to maintain state structures, the feudal-based Moldavian military forces were no longer convoked, and the few troops maintained by the rulers remained professional mercenaries such as the Simony. 
However, Moldavia and the similarly affected Wallachia remained both important sources of income for the Ottoman Empire and relatively prosperous agricultural economies, especially as suppliers of grain and cattle. The latter was especially relevant in Moldavia, which remained an underpopulated country of pastures. In time, much of the resources were tied to the Ottoman economy, either through monopolies on trade that were only lifted in 1829, after the Treaty of Adrianople which did not affect all domains directly, or through the raise in direct taxes, the one demanded by the Ottomans from the princes, as well as the ones demanded by the princes from the country's population. Taxes were directly proportional with Ottoman requests, but also with the growing importance of Ottoman appointment and sanctioning of princes in front of election by the boyars and the boyar council, Svatl Boyarisk drawing in a competition among pretenders, which also implied the intervention of creditors as suppliers of bribes. The fiscal system soon included taxes such as the vicariate a tax on head of cattle, first introduced by Iancu Sassel in the 1580s. The economic opportunities offered brought about a significant influx of Greek and Levantine financiers and officials, who entered a stiff competition with the high boyars over appointments to the court. As the manor system suffered the blows of economic crises, and in the absence of salarization which implied that persons in office could decide their own income, obtaining princely appointment became the major focus of a boyar's career. Such changes also implied the decline of free peasantry and the rise of serfdom, as well as the rapid fall in the importance of low boyars a traditional institution, the latter soon became marginal, and, in more successful instances, added to the population of towns, however, they also implied a rapid transition towards a monetary economy, based on exchanges in foreign currency. Serfdom was doubled by the much less numerous slave population Robi, composed of migrant Roma and captured Nogais. The conflict between princes and boyars was to become exceptionally violent, the latter group, who frequently appealed to the Ottoman court in order to have princes comply with its demands, was persecuted by rulers such as Alexandru Lapisninu and John III. Johann Voda's revolt against the Ottomans ended in his execution 1574. The country descended into political chaos, with frequent Ottoman and Tatar incursions and pillages. The claims of Musatans to the crown and the traditional system of succession were ended by scores of illegitimate reigns. One of the usurpers, Johann Iacob Heraclid, was a Protestant Greek who encouraged the Renaissance and attempted to introduce Lutheranism to Moldavia. In 1595, the rise of the Movilesti boyars to the throne with Euremia Movila coincided with the start of frequent anti-Ottoman and anti-Habsburg military expeditions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth into Moldavian territory see Moldavian magnate wars, and rivalries between pretenders to the Moldavian throne encouraged by the three competing powers. The Wallachian prince Michael the Brave, after previously taking over Transylvania, also deposed Prince Euremia Movilla, in 1600, and managed to become the first prince to rule over Moldavia, Wallachia, and Transylvania. The episode ended in Polish conquests of lands down to Bucharest, soon ended by the outbreak of the Polish Swedish War and the re establishment of Ottoman rule. Polish incursions were dealt a blow by the Ottomans during the 1620 Battle of Sikora, which also saw an end to the reign of Gaspar Graziani. A period of relative peace followed during the more prosperous and prestigious rule of Vasile Lupu. He took the throne as a boyar appointee in 1637 and began battling his rival Gorge Stefan, as well as the Wallachian prince Matej Basarab. However, his invasion of Wallachia, with the backing of Cossack Hetman Boden Komelnitsky, ended in disaster at the Battle of Finta in 1653. A few years later, Moldavia was occupied for two short intervals by the anti-Ottoman Wallachian prince Konstantin Serban, who clashed with the first ruler of the Gika family, George Gika. In the early 1680s, Moldavian troops under George Dukas intervened in right-bank Ukraine and assisted Mehmed IV in the Battle of Vienna, only to suffer the effects of the Great Turkish War. Phanariots <laughs> 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 The 
During the late 17th century, Moldavia became the target of the Russian Empire's southwards expansion, inaugurated by Peter the Great with the Russo-Turkish War of 1710–1711. Prince Dmitri Kantemir sided with Peter in open rebellion against the Ottomans, but he was defeated at Stanilesti. Sultan Ahmed III officially discarded recognition of local choices for princes, imposing instead a system relying solely on Ottoman approval, the Fanariot Epoch, inaugurated by the reign of Nicholas Mavrocordatos. Fanariot rule was marked by political corruption, intrigue, and high taxation, as well as by sporadic incursions of Habsburg and Russian armies deep into Moldavian territory. Nonetheless, they also attempted legislative and administrative modernization inspired by the Enlightenment such as the decision by Constantine Mavrocordatos to salarize public offices, to the outrage of boyars, and the abolition of serfdom in 1749, as well as Scala Kalamachi's code, and signified a decrease in Ottoman demands after the threat of Russian annexation became real and the prospects of a better life led to waves of peasant emigration to neighboring lands. The effects of Ottoman control were also made less notable after the 1774 Treaty of Kukut Kainaka allowed Russia to intervene in favor of Ottoman subjects of the Eastern Orthodox faith, leading to campaigns of petitioning by the Moldavian boyars against princely policies. In 1712, Houghton was taken over by the Ottomans and became part of a defensive system that Moldavian princes were required to maintain, as well as an area for Islamic colonization the Laz community. <laughs> <laughs> Fragmentation In 1775 Moldavia lost to the Habsburg Empire its northwestern part, which became known as Bukovina. For Moldavia, it meant both an important territorial loss and a major blow to the cattle trade, as the region stood on the trade route to Central Europe. The Treaty of Jassy in 1792 forced the Ottoman Empire to cede Yedison to the Russian Empire, which made Russian presence much more notable, given that the empire acquired a common border with Moldavia. The first effect of this was the cession of the eastern half of Moldavia renamed as Bessarabia to the Russian Empire in 1812. <laughs> <laughs> Organic Statute, 1848 Revolution Fanariot rule was officially ended after the 1821 occupation of the country by Alexander Ypsilantis's Philiki Ateria during the Greek War of Independence. The subsequent Ottoman retaliation led to the rule of Johann Sturza. He was considered the first of a new system, since the Ottomans and Russia had agreed in 1826 to allow for the election by locals of rulers over the two Danubian principalities, and convened on their mandating for seven year terms. In practice, a new foundation to reigns in Moldavia was created by the Russo-Turkish War 1828 beginning a period of Russian domination over the two countries which ended only in 1856. Begun as a military occupation under the command of Pavel Kiselyov, Russian domination gave Wallachia and Moldavia, which were not removed from nominal Ottoman control, the modernizing organic statute the first document resembling a constitution, as well as the first to regard both principalities. After 1829, the country also became an important destination for immigration of Ashkenazi Jews from the Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria and areas of Russia see History of the Jews in Romania and Sudeti. The first Moldavian rule established under the statute, that of Mihail Sturza, was nonetheless ambivalent, eager to reduce abuse of office. Sturza introduced reforms the abolition of slavery, secularization, economic rebuilding, but he was widely seen as enforcing his own power over that of the newly instituted Consultative Assembly. A supporter of the union of his country with Wallachia and of Romanian Romantic nationalism, he obtained the establishment of a customs union between the two countries 1847 and showed support for radical projects favored by low boyars. Nevertheless, he clamped down with noted violence the Moldavian revolutionary attempt in the last days of March 1848. Gregor Alexandru Gica allowed the exiled revolutionaries to return to Moldavia c. 
1853, which led to the creation of the National Party Partida Nacional, a trans-boundary group of radical union supporters which campaigned for a single state under a foreign dynasty. Topic: <laughs> Southern Bessarabia In 1856, under the terms of the Treaty of Paris, the Russian Empire returned to Moldavia a significant territory in southern Bessarabia including a part of Budjak, organized later as the Bolgrad, Karhul, and Ismail counties. <laughs> <laughs> Union with Wallachia Russian domination ended abruptly after the Crimean War, when the Treaty of Paris also passed the two Romanian principalities under the tutelage of great European powers together with Russia and the Ottoman overlord. Power sharing included the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, the Austrian Empire, the French Empire, the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia, and Prussia. Due to Austrian and Ottoman opposition and British reserves, the Union program as demanded by radical campaigners was debated intensely. In September 1857, given that Kaimakam Nikolai Vogorade had perpetrated fraud in elections in Moldavia, the powers allowed the two states to convene ad hoc divans, which were to decide a new constitutional framework. The result showed overwhelming support for the Union, as the creation of a liberal and neutral state. After further meetings among leaders of Tudor states, an agreement was reached the Paris Convention, whereby a limited union was to be enforced, separate governments and thrones, with only two bodies a court of cassation and a central commission residing in Fixani. It also stipulated that an end to all privilege was to be passed into law, and awarded back to Moldavia the areas around Bolrad, Karhul, and Ismail. However, the convention failed to note whether the two thrones could not be occupied by the same person, allowing Partida Nationala to introduce the candidacy of Alexandru Ioan Cusa in both countries. On January 17, January 5, 1859 Old Style, in Yassi, he was elected Prince of Moldavia by the respective electoral body. After street pressure over the much more conservative body in Bucharest, Cusa was elected in Wallachia as well February 5, January 24. Exactly three years later, after diplomatic missions that helped remove opposition to the action, the formal union created the United Principalities the basis of modern Romania and instituted Cusa as Domnita all legal matters were clarified after the replacement of the prince with Carol of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen in April 1866, and the creation of an independent kingdom of Romania in 1881 this officially ending the existence of the Principality of Moldavia. Topic Society Topic Slavery Slavery Romanian, Robi, was part of the social order from before the founding of the Principality of Moldavia, until it was abolished in stages during the 1840s and 1850s. Most of the slaves were of Roma gypsy ethnicity. There were also slaves of Tatar ethnicity, probably prisoners captured from the wars with the Nogai and Crimean Tatars. The institution of slavery was first attested in a 1470 Moldavian document, through which Prince Stephen the Great frees Wana, a Tatar slave who had fled to Jagiellon Poland. The exact origins of slavery are not known, as it was a common practice in medieval Europe. As in the Byzantine Empire, the Roma were held as slaves of the state, of the boyars or of the monasteries. Historian Nicolae Iorga associated the Roma people's arrival with the 1241 Mongol invasion of Europe and considered their slavery as a vestige of that era. He believed that the Romanians took the Roma as slaves from the Mongols and preserved their status to control their labor. Other historians consider that the Roma were enslaved while captured during the battles with the Tatars. The practice of enslaving prisoners may also have been taken from the Mongols. The ethnic identity of the Tatar slaves is unknown. They could have been captured Tatars of the Golden Horde, Cumans, or the slaves of Tatars and Cumans. While it is possible that some Romani people were slaves or auxiliary troops of the Mongols or Tatars, most of them came from south of the Danube, demonstrating that slavery a widespread practice. 
The Tatar slaves, smaller in numbers, were eventually merged into the Roma population. Traditionally, Roma slaves were divided into three categories. The smallest was owned by the Hospodas, and went by the Romanian language name of Tigani Domnesti, gypsies belonging to the Lord. The two other categories comprised Tigani Manastiasti, gypsies belonging to the monasteries who were the property of Romanian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox monasteries, and Tigani Boyaresti, gypsies belonging to the Boyars, who were enslaved by the category of landowners. The abolition of slavery was carried out following a campaign by young revolutionaries who embraced the liberal ideas of the Enlightenment. In 1844, Moldavian Prince Mihail Sturdza proposed a law on the freeing of slaves owned by the church and state. By the 1850s, the movement gained support from almost the whole of Romanian society. In December 1855, following a proposal by Prince Grigor Alexandru Ghica, a bill drafted by Mihail Kaganisianu and Petra Mavrigeni was adopted by the Divan. The law emancipated all slaves to the status of taxpayers. Citizens. Support for the abolitionists was reflected in Romanian literature of the mid 19th century. The issue of the Roma slavery became a theme in the literary works of various liberal and romantic intellectuals, many of whom were active in the abolitionist camp. The Romanian abolitionist movement was also influenced by the much larger movement against black slavery in the United States through press reports and through a translation of Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. Translated by Theodore Codrescu and first published in Yassi in 1853, under the name Colaba Li Mosu Toma Sao Viata Negra Law in Sudal State Law Unite in America, which translates back as, Uncle Toma's Cabin or the Life of Blacks in the Southern United States of America. It was the first American novel to be published in Romanian. The foreword included a study on slavery by Mihail Kaganisianu. Topic. Military forces Under the reign of Stephen the Great, all farmers and villagers had to bear arms. Stephen justified this by saying that, "...every man has a duty to defend his fatherland." According to Polish chronicler Jan de Lugos, if someone was found without carrying a weapon, he was sentenced to death. Stephen reformed the army by promoting men from the landed free peasantry razesi i.e. something akin to freeholding yeomen to infantry voinici, and light cavalry hansari, to make himself less dependent on the boyars, and introduced his army to guns. In times of crises, the small host Ostia Mica, which consisted of around 10,000 to 12,000 men, stood ready to engage the enemy, while the large host Ostia Mare, which could reach up to 40,000, had all the free peasantry older than 14, and strong enough to carry a sword or use the bow, recruited. This seldom happened, for such a levée en masse was devastating for both economy and population growth. In the Battle of Vaslui, Stephen had to summon the large host and also recruited mercenary troops. In the Middle Ages and early Renaissance, the Moldavians relied on light cavalry Calarasi, which used hit-and-run tactics similar to those of the Tatars, this gave them great mobility and also flexibility, in case they found it more suitable to dismount their horses and fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as it happened in 1422, when 400 horse archers were sent to aid Jagiellon Poland, Moldavia's overlord against the Teutonic Knights. When making eye contact with the enemy, the horse archers would withdraw to a nearby forest and camouflage themselves with leaves and branches. According to Jan de Lugos, when the enemy entered the wood, they were showered with arrows and defeated. The heavy cavalry consisted of the nobility, namely, the boyars and their guards, the viteji, lit, brave ones, small nobility, and the curtaini, the court cavalry, all nominally part of the small host. In times of war, boyars were compelled by the feudal system of allegiance to supply the prince with troops in accordance with the extent of their manorial domain. Other troops consisted of professional foot soldiers which fulfilled the heavy infantry role, and the plazi, free peasants whose role was that of border guards, they guarded the mountain passes and were prepared to ambush the enemy and to fight delaying actions. 
In the absence of the prince, command was assigned to the mayor Spatar, Grand Sword Bearer, a military office, or to the mayor Vornik, approximately. Governor of the country, a civilian office second only to the voivod, which was filled by the prince himself. Supplying the troops was by tradition later made into law the duty of the inhabitants of those lands on which the soldiers were present at a given time. The Moldavians as well as Wallachians favorite military doctrine in defensive wars was a scorched earth policy combined with harassment of the advancing enemy using hit and run tactics and disruption of communication and supply lines followed by a large scale ambush a weakened enemy would be lured in a place where it would find itself in a position hard or impossible to defend a general attack would follow often with devastating results the shattered remains of what was once the enemy army would be pursued closely and harassed all the way to the border and sometimes beyond. A typical example of successful employments of this scenario is the Battle of Vaslui. Towards the end of the 15th century, especially after the success of guns and cannons, mercenaries became a dominant force in the country's military. With the economic demands created by the stagnation of the Ottoman Empire, the force diminished and included only mercenaries such as the Simoni. The 1829 Treaty of Adrianople allowed Moldavia to again maintain its own troops, no longer acting as an auxiliary under strict Ottoman supervision, and assigned red over blue pennants sea flag and coat of arms of Moldavia. Their renewed existence under Mihail Sturdza was a major symbol and rally point for the nationalist cause, aiding in bringing about the 1848 Moldavian Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Fleet An early mention of a Moldavian naval fleet is found in connection with the rule of Aaron Tyrannul, who used it to help Wallachian ruler Michael the Brave establish his control over the Chilia branch of the Danube and Dobruja. The Treaty of Adrianople provided for a Moldavian self-defense naval force, to be composed of CAC vessels. Schooners armed with cannons were first built in the 1840s. Along with patrolling the Danube, these made their way on its tributaries, the Sirat and the Prut River. <inaudible> <inaudible> Flags and historical coats of arms Geography <inaudible> 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 Geographically, Moldavia is limited by the Carpathian Mountains to the west, the Cheremosh River to the north, the Dniester River to the east and the Danube and Black Sea to the south. The Prut River flows approximately through its middle from north to south. Of late 15th century Moldavia, with an area of approximately 97,000 square kilometers, 37,000 square miles, the biggest part and the core of the former principality is located in Romania, 47.5%, followed by the Republic of Moldova, 30.5%, and Ukraine, 22%. This represents 88% of the Republic of Moldova's surface, 19.5% of Romania's surface, and 3.5% of Ukraine's surface. The region is mostly hilly, with a range of mountains in the west, and plain areas in the southeast. Moldavia's highest altitude is in I Peak 2,279 meters, which is also the westernmost point of the region. Topic: Administrative divisions. Topic: Population. Topic: Historical population. Contemporary historians estimate the population historically referred to as Moldavians of the Moldavian Principality in the 15th century, at between 250,000 to 600,000 people, but an extensive cartography was first conducted in 1769 to 1774. In 1848, the northwestern part, annexed in 1775 by the Habsburg Empire, Bukovina, had a population of 377,571. 
1856, the eastern half of Moldavia, Bessarabia, annexed in 1812 by the Russian Empire, had a population of 990,274, while the population of Moldavia proper the western half, in 1859, was 1,463,927. Cities The largest cities as per last censuses and metropolitan areas in the Moldavia region are Moldova Chisinau 532,513 662,836 in metropolitan area Balti 97,930 102,457 Taina Benda 91882 Romania Yasi 290422 465477 in metropolitan area capital of Moldavia between 1564 to 1859 Galati 249432 323563 Baco 144307 223239 Botosani 106847 144617 Suchava 92121 144100 capital of Moldavia between 1388 to 1564 Piatra Nemt 85,055, 131,334. Fixani 79,315, 125,699. Ukraine. Chernivtsi, Cernauti, 240,600. Ismail, Ishmael, 84,815. Topic: Education. In 1562, the so-called Scola Latina, a Latin academic college, was founded in Kotnari, near Yassi, a school which marked the beginnings of the organized humanistic education institutions in Moldavia. The first institute of higher learning that functioned on the territory of Romania was Academia Vasiliana, 1640, founded by Prince Vasile Lupu as a higher school for Latin and Slavonic languages, followed by the Princely Academy in 1707. The first high education structure in Romanian language was established in the autumn of 1813, when Gorge Asaci laid the foundations of a class of engineers, its activities taking place within the Greek Princely Academy. After 1813, other moments marked the development of higher education in Romanian language, regarding both humanities and the technical science. Academia Mihailiana, founded in 1835 by Prince Mihail Sturza, is considered the first Romanian superior institute. In 1860, three faculties part of the Academia Mihailiana formed the nucleus for the newly established University of Yassi, the first Romanian modern university. Culture. Literature Kazania li Valam Descriptio Moldavii Chronicle of Huru Gregoresh Maron Kostin Nikolai Kostin Ion Nekolche Dimitri Kantamir Gorge Asachi Magazines and newspapers Alauta Romanasca Albina Romanasca Dacia Literara Propasirea Romania Literara Theatre The Great Theatre, National Theatre Topic Architecture 
Moldavian style World Heritage Sites Churches of Moldavia Residents of Bukovinian and Dalmatian Metropolitans Rudy Geodetic Point as part of the Struve Geodetic Arc Tentative List Nemt Monastery Treyurari Monastery the cultural landscape Orhail Vechi Old Orhe. The typical chronosum soils of the Balti Steppe Slatioara Secular Forest <laughs> <laughs> Image gallery <laughs> See also